It couldn't be that Republicans overturned Roe and immediately went to work to restrict abortion access across the country, only to now focus on cutting food assistance for babies, right? My name is Brittany Page, and this is The Page Perspective. Thank you for joining me. You can follow me on all the social media, at Brittany E. Page. That's on Instagram, threads, Twitter. I guess it's X now, dear Lord, X, uh, Also, be sure to subscribe. It helps me a lot. So I'm scrolling, you know, as we do on our phones, looking for something that piques my interest for a video. And I see this headline, Republicans want to cut food assistance for 5 million low-income babies and parents. Now I can hear it now. The not surprised guys, ultimate moment. The clickety clack of the keyboard ready to fire off and are you surprised by this? Who is surprised by this? I always see it in the comments. So let's get this out of the way right now. No, I am not surprised by this. Should I only talk about things that surprise me, by the way? Republicans working overtime to force birth and then cut financial assistance for struggling parents should be the front page news on every website that you look at because it gets to the heart of what we're dealing with here. But this is not being talked about enough. As it stands now, more than 20 states have implemented total abortion bans or have moved to restrict abortion access up to a certain number of weeks and in some cases as early as six before most people even know they're pregnant. We don't have a ton of data on how these abortion bans are impacting the number of increased births in states across the country, but one study from Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health looked specifically at Texas. According to reporting from the Texas Tribune, researchers used historical birth data to model how many births likely would have occurred in Texas if the law hadn't gone into effect and compared that to the number of actual births. In December 2022, more than a year after the law went into effect, Texas had 5% more live births than would have been expected if the law didn't go into effect. Although our study doesn't detail why these extra births occurred, our findings strongly suggest that a considerable number of pregnant individuals in Texas were unable to overcome barriers to abortion access, said Allison Gemmel, one of the study's lead authors. So abortion bans are having their intended effect. Abortions are inaccessible and people are being forced to have babies they may not have wanted, and also that they may be unable to care for. And this in the context of a country where people are relying on buy now, pay later programs to buy not just clothes or a Peloton, but groceries. This is in a country where 47% of families in a recent poll report, quote, not always having enough diapers to change their children as often as they would like, finding it difficult to afford buying diapers for their children and or running out of diapers because they couldn't afford enough? Where is the public investment in paid leave, making childcare affordable, ensuring that people are able to take care of the babies that they will now be forced to have because of draconian and damaging abortion laws? Well, instead of working overtime to ensure the thousands and thousands of new babies being born will be cared for, Republicans have set their sights on cutting WIC, the Special Supplemental Nutrition Program for Women, Infants, and Children. This program offers supplemental nutritious foods, nutrition education and counseling, screening and referrals to other social services, and it serves pregnant women through pregnancy and up to six weeks after birth or after pregnancy ends, uh, breastfeeding women up to the infant's first birthday, non-breastfeeding postpartum women up to six months after the birth of an infant or after pregnancy ends, infants up to their first birthday, and children up to their fifth birthday. WIC serves 53% of all infants born in the United States. As you can see, based on who qualifies, there are already strict requirements for who qualifies. There are also income eligibility requirements. It is a very specific program, even down to the food you're eligible to purchase with your benefits. Just look at this example. You can buy breakfast cereal, either ready to eat or instant and regular hot cereals. But when you look at the requirements, it must contain a minimum of 28 milligrams of iron per 100 grams of dry cereal. And when you scroll on this page, all of the various eligible foods have similarly strict nutritional requirements. 
WIC also has specific limits for the amount of food provided as well. Look at this graph showing how much food children ages one to four are eligible to receive each month. One dozen eggs, one pound of dried beans, or 18 ounces of peanut butter. I mean, this is everything Republicans wish for. We hear them all the time complaining that poor people in this country have had it too good for too long and that their priority is restricting which foods they can purchase with their food stamps. No soda, no cake, no steak, no seafood. God forbid a person struggling to pay their bills has a good meal every once in a while. As a brief reprieve from working all day, every day, trying to make ends meet, God forbid a child have, I don't know, a birthday and want some ice cream, right? But before I get too off track, WIC is separate from SNAP, what we know as food stamps. And as you can see, WIC is already highly targeted, specific, and enormously beneficial for those who are able to use the program. We're talking improved birth outcomes and healthcare cost savings, fewer infant deaths, longer pregnancies, lower incidence of moderately low and very low birth weight infants, improved diet and diet-related outcomes, higher intake of essential vitamins and nutrients for babies and kids, improved cognitive development, especially vocabulary scores for children and mothers who were enrolled in WIC prenatally, significant improvement for memory, for numbers, for children enrolled in WIC after the first year of life. I mean, come on. All of this translates into a healthier society. And for those who would say, what about the cost? You'd think Republicans would jump for joy at the fiscal benefits of this program too. Research shows that, quote, every dollar spent on WIC during pregnancy The cost savings in Medicaid during the first 60 days of life ranged from $1.77 to $3.13. But Republicans have had enough. Under the House GOP's Agriculture Appropriations Bill, they are laying out their priorities. And one of their priorities, apparently, making life more difficult for babies, children, and parents. Reading from Washington Post reporting, The GOP-controlled House's fiscal 2024 agricultural bill would either eliminate or reduce benefits for 5.3 million kids and pregnant postpartum and breastfeeding adults, the Center on Budget and Policy Priority estimates. Of that total, roughly 4.6 million participants would have their benefits cut, primarily because of rollbacks of a fruit and vegetable benefit that had been expanded in 2021 based on recommendations of the National Academies of Science, Engineering, and Medicine. Another 650,000 to 750,000 eligible people would likely be turned away from the program entirely because of funding shortfalls. And this is all about priorities, because this is the same House GOP that just last month approved $886 billion for the annual military spending bill. This, of course, despite the fact that the Department of Defense can't pass an audit, five failed audits since 2017. What's that that they're always saying? Uh, Fiscal responsibility and unnecessary spending? For Republicans, it's always, yeah, but how are we going to pay for a child to eat their one single dozen of eggs each month? And not, hey, why is the defense budget almost $900 billion, more than the next 10 highest spending countries combined, and more than the next 10 largest cabinet agencies combined, while also not being able to pass an audit or explain where exactly all this money is going. And this, this not taking care of the most vulnerable is going to have ripple effects for generations. You remember that list of the benefits I told you about with WIC? Those are the same benefits that come along with other social safety net programs to create a healthier society. And when you cut those while forcing people to have babies they don't want or can't afford to take care of, it's a recipe for a lot of pain and struggle, the creation or continuation of cycles of abuse or poverty. And it's something that Republicans could prevent if they wanted to, if only they wanted to. What do you think? I'd love to know. You can call 657-464-7609 or send an email to idoubtit at dollamore.com. 
You can also support my work on Patreon, patreon.com slash I doubt it podcast. Let's not forget this issue because it's an important one. Share this video with someone you think could use it. Take care and I will see you next time.